Hello, my name's Ben Hushner from Curious Turtle. And in this short tutorial, what I'm going to be looking at is the workflow to get your data out of Imagineer Systems Mocha for Final Cut into Final Cut. So without further ado, let's uh, open up our clip. And let's give this a project name. And it's 1920 by 1080, 30 frames a second, and progressive. So what I'm not going to do in this, what I'm not going to do in this tutorial is go through the basic operations of Mocha. There are some great tutorials on Imagineer Systems website, and I uh, strongly recommend you have a little look at that. The first thing I'm going to show you is a little screen replace here, uh, and this should be fairly straightforward. Um, you know, track the uh, the corners of the screen itself, and away you go. Except the problem is we've got some lovely reflections going in there which I like to keep and as it tilts through uh, we get huge changes in luminance uh, and in fact at certain points you know the corners just sort of go completely completely black so from the perspective of, of a point tracker this is a, a bit of a nightmare but let's see how the uh, planar tracker works so instead of tracking now I don't need to track the entire screen here, or in fact the entire phone here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to track several smaller areas of it. So I'm going to take one area there and just come up here to my add contour using the X-spline. And just track another couple of places in here. This is good for a couple of different reasons. Well one well, firstly, it's going to be quicker to track, and we'll still end up with some good tracking information out of it. So let's come down here to our motion here, and I'm just going to turn on perspective, because we do want to be using uh, perspective modeling in here as well. Uh, the minimum percentage of pixels used, that's generally defaults to a, uh, a good value. I'm just going to crank this up to 40. Uh, what I'm not going to do is crank it up to 100%. That would be a very disastrous thing. Uh, You've got a law of diminishing returns on here, so if you crank this up too high, you actually end up with a worse track than you would do otherwise. Uh, and let's just track this backwards and see what happens. So apart from the reflections and the, uh, the luminance changes, there are other things that make this track quite tricky. Uh, the big one is there's a huge amount of motion blur that's going on in our image. If you have a look at the, uh, the buttons uh, at, the, at the top and the bottom, you see that as the clip progresses, at certain points, these become completely invisible because of the amount of motion blur in them. But as we can see, that's not an impediment at all to Mocha's, uh, to Mocha's planar tracker. At certain points, our shapes also disappear out of the screen, but the tracking is still holding true, so we shouldn't really be concerned about that. Now, at this point, our uh, track is starting to go slightly awry, so what I'm going to do is just expand this out a little bit here, just so we get a bit more data up there take this down a little bit here and continue our track and again as it starts to go a little bit awry as it moves a bit further off screen and everything here goes com almost completely black it's worth just tweaking that track a very small amount Now as we come to the end, we'll have a little look through. That's held up pretty well, uh, I think, but there's only one way to be sure, and that's to have a little look and turn on our surface. I'm going to turn off the splines. Now the surface has a number of different roles. Now the main role it has... <coughs> now, the big, now the main role that it has is to uh, determine where your tracking data goes through. So for example here the four points of our surface are going to determine the four points of our, of our corner pin. Uh, but we'll see how it also plays into the other transform data as well. So let's just have a little look through here. And we should see that the surface is held pretty well even up at the end where it's gone a little bit off, but it's, it's held up pretty well indeed. 
So I'm going to uh, come and use the adjust track. So find a good frame to start with. Use the adjust track just to make sure that our data is as good as it possibly can be. So wherever I see things have started to drift off, I'll try and find the, the place of most drift. Let's start at the front. And I'll show you, we turn on our grid here. I can actually see if everything's sort of matching up. So where I can't see a point that's gone off frame, grid is a fantastic little tool just to, uh, to let me know that everything's working out. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to try and find the spot of maximum drift, which is going to be about there. Fairly tricky with the old motion blur to see exactly where we're after. We want to try and add as few keyframes as we possibly can. If we're having to add too many keyframes and we're fighting against the track, it probably means we've got to retrack it because we've gone quite badly wrong. Okay, so when I'm happy with that, I'm going to just check this out using my insert clip. and I can either insert a lovely little logo. Very nice, but I also find the, uh, the grids to be exceedingly useful here. And I'll play that through. Just to see if we've got a, any sort of bounce in our in our corner pin where it shouldn't be, just to make sure that everything's tracked nicely. Okay, so once we're happy with our, our data here, let's go and export the tracking data. So we can take it out either as Final Cut Basic Motion or Final Cut Distort. So the distort's what we'd use for a corner pin, and the basic motion is what we use for uh, match moving or stabilizing. 